How many of you would give one dollar to save a life? Show of hands. Of course you would. Thank you so much. That's the basic idea of one dollar for life. I'm Robert Freeman. I'm a teacher at Los Altos High School in Los Altos, California. And I'm also the founder of One Dollar for Life, and I'm a member of the Palo Alto Kiwanis Club. One Dollar for Life is what the, the name implies. The idea is really simple. We ask every American teenager to give just one dollar. And then we take those funds and we put them together and we build schools and other infrastructure projects in the developing world. And the result is bigger people here and a better world out there. It's really that simple. It's one dollar. The vision is, is almost disarmingly simple. There's 40 million high school students in America. If we can get every one of them to give one dollar, we can build more than a thousand schools every year in the developing world. And I believe we're going to do it. The idea is just catching on and growing like wildfire. We do this through key clubs. We help key clubs organize the fundraisers in their schools where the kids are invited to give the dollar. So I'm going to take you through a very fast tour here of some of the projects that we've done from kids giving one dollar. There it is. Conceptually, it's very simple. There's the, the U.S. schools on the left, ODFL in the center. We work with non-governmental organizations or NGOs or on the ground in developing world countries. They're the ones that actually implement the projects. <coughs> Operationally, it's very simple. We give the what we call a fundraiser in a box. It's all the tools that a key club needs, all the promotional tools, posters, information for teachers to help educate them. Everything's up to and including boxes that they pass around the classroom, ask the kids to put in one dollar. And it makes them very, very quickly come up to speed. Here's some projects that we've already completed. This is a really fun part of the presentation. The very first school we ever did was in a little town called Narumaru in Kenya. We had gotten five schools here in California, three in Northern California and two in Southern California. We had five schools to do these fundraisers. We collected $9,000. Doesn't sound like much money, but with that money, we were able to build. There's the school on the left, the old school. You can't see it, the resolution on the on this screen, but that says deputy principal's office. <clears throat> and there's the new school on the right, made out of stone. That thing will be there for generations and will, will educate thousands and thousands of students. And it came about from kids giving one dollar. While we were there, we visited an orphanage, and they had a garden to raise vegetables to feed themselves, but they had no protein. And I asked the woman who ran the orphanage, What's your strategy? And she said, if I could just get two milk cows, I could feed every child a glass of milk every day. And so I came back and went to another teacher I knew in Palo Alto, Nancy Smith at Jordan Middle School. And I said, Nancy, can you do a fundraiser for us? We need some cows. She said, we'll do it, Robert. Those kids raised $1,800, and those cows will produce milk for eight years. So those students at Jordan Middle School in Palo Alto have the nobility knowing that with their dollar, they're feeding an African child protein for eight years. We bought schools for a desk in Malawi. They had finished the school but didn't have any money left for desks. The parents, we had helped contribute to the development of the school. The parents had hand-built 160,000 bricks to build that school. It was an elementary school. It's the first school they ever had in a seven square mile, seven a radius of seven miles. We're now doing a high school for them. When the Chinese earthquake hit last year, within three weeks, two weeks, I'm sorry, with Bay Area high schools, we were able to ask kids, will you give just a dollar? There was more than 10,000 schools destroyed. There was more than 100,000 homes destroyed, more than a million people homeless. We were able to raise $3,000 that we gave to the China Red Cross within two weeks. Our idea is that once we get big enough and another calamity hit somewhere on the planet, an earthquake in China or a, a tsunami in Aceh, within days we can say the food is on the way, the medicine is on the way, the water is on the way from American teenagers who gave one dollar. There's a school we built in Nepal, a three-room school. <clears throat> this was the first school they had ever had in 120 square kilometers. It was so significant that the Nepalese Minister of Education came and commemorated the school when we opened it last year. 
That cost us $10,000, and kids from key clubs at seven different schools helped raise that money. This is one of my favorite projects. We rented the back end of a, well, an 18-wheel truck over there. It's an ocean-going shipping container that we put on a boat. And our key clubbers distributed 2,500 flyers in the neighborhoods with two high schools, Los Altos High School and Gunn High School. And it said, if you've got an old bicycle in the garage that you're not using anymore, bring it on down. We'll put it in the container and ship it to Africa. And we did. And on one Saturday morning, oh, we had about 30, 35 uh, Kiwanis members, the key clubbers out there, loading the bikes into the, into the truck. And we ended up shipping 452 used bicycles to Africa. We helped the, we helped the high schools over there set up bicycle repair shops so the kids could learn an appropriate technology. And it's unbelievable what they're doing with those things that would have otherwise gone into a landfill and been our garbage. There's a new school that we just finished in the village of Tamau, Kenya. Again, there's the, the before on the left and the after on the right. And that was just opened earlier this year. Here, this is one of my favorite projects. In Nepal, when we built the school, we found out that when girls reach puberty, if the parents don't have a husband for her, they sell the girls. I don't have to tell you what they end up, you know, their lifestyle ends up being. We found an organization that would take piglets and give the piglets to the family, and the family will raise the piglets for a year on table scraps and foraging, and at the end of the year they can sell the piglets for what they could have sold the girl for. And so one high school in the Bay Area, Pinewood High School, helped us buy 30 piglets so that 30 girls did not have to be sold into slavery at that school that we built in the village there. There's a new school we just finished in uh, Indonesia. Actually, it's not quite finished. It'll be finished later this month. You can see August 2009. There's a new school we finished just a couple of weeks ago in Nicaragua. Again, every one of these projects has been done with high school students giving $1, sponsored through a key club doing a, a fundraiser on their campus. Uh, I think I'm running out of time, but let me say this, underneath the dollar is this, is we're trying to give kids four, what we call four C's. Instead of being isolated from the world, they're connected to their world. And instead of being just selfish, they're compassionate. And instead of being competitive, they're cooperative. And instead of feeling impotent, they feel competent. We believe that with one dollar C's, those four C's, planted into tens of millions of teenagers' hearts that we'll create a generation of bigger people. There's some of the uh, management tools we give to the key clubs to help them organize their fundraisers, and that's all that comes in the fundraiser in a box. And there's something the teachers say, this is the best fundraiser we've ever done. Our, our kids have never been so inspired. I'm very impressed. It's so easy to implement. The fundraiser in a box is exactly what its name implies. This is just a great idea. Teachers are inherently altruistic themselves, and they want to grow bigger people. And this is something that the teachers have really responded really well to. And this is the last slide. Even the greatest waterfall starts with a single drop of water. A single drop may be one dollar, it may be one individual, it may be one key club, but we want to create a tsunami of tens of millions and hundreds of millions of drops that end up changing the world. And I'll leave you once again with that vision that I mentioned at the very beginning. That is that there's the, 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 the tens of millions of students in America, and if each one gives just one dollar, we can build more than a thousand schools a year in the developing world. It really is a change the world idea. There's no new laws of physics that we're waiting to invent, uh, no cold fusion waiting to be discovered. It's just a matter of spreading the word. And that's our story. If you have a key club in your neighborhood that you sponsor, please have them get in touch with us. We'll get them their fundraiser in the box. We give them telephone support, online support. We can even build galleries on our website to help publicize in their community how their school and their key club and connect them with their project. It's unbelievable when you see kids come back and say, you know, for the first time in my life, I've helped somebody else with a dog. They gave up a cookie. Did I see a hand up over here? We'll take yes, questions. I'm just wondering if we don't have a key club, can we take this to a local high school? Yes, you can. Any high school. Okay. Uh, robotics clubs, key clubs, international clubs, amnesty clubs, we do it with all kinds of clubs. All you need is an altruistic teacher who says, I'll organize. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.